Thanks for joining me on Megazoid's Hut. Uh, I think this is how you're supposed to pitch these things. <laughs> My cat. The world's smallest television! It's not really. But uh, it is interesting. So I spoke this on... Um, Instructables about two, three months ago. The Mini Retro TV by Chen Lian, 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 that's it. <laughs> um, or also known as Moon on Our Nation, or one word, uh, if you ever want to Google him. He's a very prolific uh, maker and inventor, and I have been sort of personally following him for about sort of five, six years. Uh, everything he makes is something that I'm interested in. It, you know, I have... Um, had a crack at some of his previous projects, but he's um, done these mini TVs or mini video players, and uh, I think they're they're kind of ir irresistible, really. They're they're fun to make. Everybody likes them. Great little presents, and uh, yeah, I mean, what's not to like? So he, I believe he's also the first person to get sound. And this is his original um, sort of playing videos or video with the ESP32. I th believe he's the first person to, to manage that. Um, so yeah, very clever guy. Anyway, I had a look at this and uh, basically I couldn't resist it. So as you can see, there's not that much needed for this project, which is great. It's very affordable and quite straightforward as long as you avoid a few pitfalls. Everything's from AliExpress here. This is the uh, exact SD card breakout, micro SD card breakout that uh, Chen Lien uses um, and I wouldn't recommend this at all. This is from a very old stock I believe and it's always definitely been uh, kept in a damp place because there's comments on AliExpress saying it's rusty. I got a rusty one. It had rusty pins. Also in, internally I think there could be some rust. Really don't recommend these. The only advantage of getting this and you'll probably get rust if you buy it, <laughs> is that obviously it has mounting points inside the case uh, which correspond to the holes on this particular SD card breakout. I've bought another one which is a very similar design uh, which is SD components or SB is it? SB components. Sorry. And uh, it's very similar in size, uh, however I had to, or did uh, move the mounting points one millimetre either way. So I'll get that in there because uh, this is more reliable. I'm not going to be de dealing with uh, rusty contacts, thank you. Uh, so yeah, that's one of the pitfalls. Pitfall number one is the SD card comes with rust, free rust. Uh, I wouldn't personally get it. Uh, the other thing was, the other major malfunction that I had was uh, when I was testing, was I decided to go really thin with the data lines because I thought, well, you know, they're just data lines. I'll just do 30 AWG. And uh, <laughs> what's the problem? Uh, you know, I've got my uh, ground and ground and VCC I was slightly thicker. They're 28 AWG. And then I bought some cheap, nasty 30, you know, 30 AWG wire. And then I couldn't understand why it wasn't working. Because the, it was sort of working. It was half working. <laughs> but the, uh, these were not good enough to get the full 80 mega, megahertz uh, SPI data through. Because they're just too thin and too crappy. So you do have to be... I do have to avoid that if you can. You need, um, I would say, 26, 28 if you have really good quality wire, but 26 is probably about as low as you want to go, otherwise you won't get. And people in the comments of the um, Instructable have said the same thing, where they've obviously got contact issues. If you do use the du DuPont connectors, you're probably also going to get... Uh, contact issues which are going to cause things like stuttering and 
um, all sorts of artifacts and stuff. So you do have to have good quality wire, well, well connected, well soldered, and then you should be fine. So this is a good point to test. I've done 95% of the wiring. Uh, didn't have, well, I did have an issue. I mean, I had a cross wire. It's very easy to get one tiny little strand and, you know, screw things up. Um, so I did have to had to cross wire on the audio side of things. Uh, that's sorted now. Just give it a test. This is Lee software, so slightly different to the one in the Instructable because it gives, he's added a button which I haven't actually soldered on yet. Uh, but he's added a button that gives you the ability to mute, change channels. There's a few other functions I've forgotten. <laughs> um, but I haven't actually implemented that yet, or I haven't added the button. So let's just check it out. You know, the v viewing angles on this are pretty good, actually. Anyway, it's all working. There's no glitches. Uh, audio sounds good. I just need to add the additional button, chop down the um, battery cable that's way too long. I've, I have done, st stuck the back on the case. Um, spent a while trying to get that. I don't know why I got uh, fixated with trying to get all the lines out of it. Ended up spraying it a little bit. <laughs> I uh, don't know, get fixated on things. So I've just got a few extra little bits and then it's in the case. So everything's in there. It's quite a tight fit, but you know, it goes in there. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what it'd be like with the DuPont collector, connectors. I think it'd be a, a real struggle, but uh, with where I've soldered them directly to the components, it's obviously not as bad. Um, yeah, so there was a tiny bit of finishing I had to do is just to uh, file down these screws very, very slightly because it wasn't, uh, otherwise the faceplate wasn't sitting completely flush. But yeah, that's all in. Just need to get these four mounting screws in and it's job done. This case has been slightly modified by Lee, uh, my buddy Lee, and uh, he's just added some vents here and there. Biggest change though is this single button here, which I'll show you the functionality of that in a moment. So here it is. Uh, if you want to just quickly, uh, I'll just quickly show the size differences of the tiny TV, tiny circuits, tiny TV, original version. This is the Simpson Project television and the retro, mini retro TV. So it's, uh, yeah, very happy with it. Looks good. <clears throat> Had a lot of trouble with the connection between the screen and the ESP32. It's very, very fussy with regards to your wire, wire quality, quality of soldering. I probably had to do it, redo it three times. Lots and lots of toing and froing there. I was not, I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not really relishing making another one. I probably wouldn't in this particular format. Although, if it had a if a PCB, if there was a PCB between the screen, an interface between the screen and the ESP32 that would take all that unreliability out of the equation, then yeah, definitely, uh, definitely be into that. I think uh, I might have a little crack at it. But anyway, let me show you the. Uh, this is Lee, American Lee, <laughs> his his version. So it's got the vents there and there, um, but more importantly, it has this multi-function button on there. So let's see. See what that does. You need a little thing to turn it on. That's not a big deal. Oh, it's on mute at the moment. Yeah, that's the nice thing as well as Lee's put in there that it re remembers the last state that it was in. So it's on mute. So let's get that off. Oh, I think. I, yeah, there we go. So three button presses is, is mute. One button press is change the channel. Uh, try that again. Two button presses is go back to the original channel. 
Uh, there is what's the other function? There's a yeah mute. You've seen that, and then long button press will give us the battery voltage. I believe that's correct. That's what's reading. So yeah, it really adds a lot of functionality, and I think without this, it wouldn't be half as fun because the original original just sort of played the videos in a in a stream. That was it. You used to get the <laughs> so you'd always have to watch the first video. Second video, third video. Well, yeah, this gives it a lot of functionality. So, nice one, Lee. I think he's still tweaking it. I mean, I don't, I not, not have a permission to give out the source code or anything. I think he's still uh, playing with it. But yeah, I'm really happy with this. Thunderbirds. Anyway. Thanks for watching.